Less common reasons your computer might slow down. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been basically playing with computers slow and fast since 2003. Today's question is actually not so much a question as it is a summary. We've had a series of articles over the previous weeks about specific things that are the more common reasons that your computer might be slowing down. Things like running too much software or not having enough RAM or those kinds of issues that I think we're all pretty familiar with. In today's video, I want to summarize a handful of additional things that, while not as common, are things that can contribute or even can significantly cause a computer to slow down. First on our list, I call this hardware issues. Hardware issues are surprising in the sense that we normally think of hardware as either failing catastrophically or not. The reality of the situation is that hardware is weird. Hardware can fail in such a way that it doesn't really break, but it definitely can cause issues and those issues can cause your system to slow down. Two examples. In years past, when we've talked about magnetic hard disks, the old style of hard disks, one of the things that could cause a system to slow down would be a bad sector on the disk. What would happen is that the system would try very, 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 very hard to read or even write a sector on that uh, hard disk. And eventually, it would actually succeed. It would try so hard that it would eventually succeed. Unfortunately, that trying takes time. That time then would be reflected in your system slowing down whenever it tried to write to a the disk because of bad sectors. So what we would do then, of course, would be to reformat the disk or run a check disk on it or run spin write on it. And those kinds of things could potentially resolve the issue or you'd replace the disk. Today, of course, with SSDs, that's not quite the same issue, but it's a good example of how hardware, physical hardware can actually cause a problem. Another scenario, another example are networking cables. If your networking cable becomes, I'll just say, pinched or bent or damaged in some way, it's possible for the electrical connection that happens through the wires to be less than perfect. In other words, it's not broken, it's still there, but it's not 100%. And because it's not 100%, the networking protocol does the same thing that the disk did. It throws data out there it's not received. It throws data out there again. It's not received. It tries and it tries and it tries until the data is finally and successfully received. That manifests, all these retries manifest as things being slower than you expect. Your network at that point is causing your system to slow down. Solutions for that include replacing cables or dealing with hardware problems or replacing your your uh, your switch or your router or any of the other different kinds of places that these kinds of issues can manifest. So the takeaway from this first point is to think about the hardware. If the hardware, if, if there's consistency in the slowness that you're experiencing between that slowness and a specific piece of hardware, might be something to look at. Number two on the list, out-of-date software. It's interesting. A lot of the times, one of the things that slows down is old software. Sometimes in comparison to the software we're running, and sometimes it's just kind of always been slow, slowness is a bug. And in fact, sometimes with an update, a bug can appear, a bug can be introduced. So occasionally after taking an update, you'll find that the application you used to use reliably or regularly slowed down for some reason. I just had this very experience with some editing software that I use where for whatever reason, the most recent update was slower on my machine than it had been before. A subsequent update resolves the issue. So if the slowness you're experiencing is related to a specific piece of software you're using, maybe see if there's something related to that software. Make sure it's up to date. Make sure that you've got the latest version of whatever that is and check with the manufacturer to see if they have any known issues about that software potentially being slow in some circumstances. Number three on the list, 
long running machines. One of my earlier articles is you know, why reboots are such a common thing when it comes to fixing problems. There are various reasons, but you know, it's sometimes nice to start from a clean slate. Many problems go away. Slowness can be a problem that goes away. There are a number of different reasons for this relating to both software and hardware, but sometimes if you leave a machine running for a very, very, very long time without rebooting it, memory might get used up, uh, memory might get fragmented, disks can get fragmented. There's just a variety of reasons that rebooting can often improve the performance of the machine after it comes back up. This is an obscure one, but I mention it for completeness. This is probably even less likely than some of the things I've talked about so far. Number four on my list is what I'm calling display color depth. The display you're using has a certain resolution. I'll just say 1920 by 1080 pixels for high definition television. Each pixel contains a dot, a color. That color is represented by a number. That number can be eight bits wide, 256 different colors, 16 bits, 24 bits, or 32 bits. In other words, it can be many different colors, many different shades of many different colors, or it can be just a few. The issue is that if you've got, say, 16 bits per pixel, two bytes, that is a lot less data for the computer to have to manipulate than, say, 24 bits per pixel three bytes, or even 32 bits per pixel, four bytes. Those are both very common, especially in high-end displays with high-end graphics cards, but it does represent a lot more memory that has to be managed in order to display whatever's on your screen. Like I said, it's not as big of an issue as it was before, but especially if you've got an older machine, you might be able to increase the responsiveness of your display and therefore the apparent responsiveness of your computer by decreasing the color depth. Number five on the list, defragmenting. It used to be on the main list of things to worry about when it came to speed. But the fact is we are now slowly moving to solid state drives for which defragmenting actually doesn't have any impact. And even on older machines that have hard disks installed, have traditional hard disks installed, Windows from version 7 on is defragmenting for us. So it's rarely the case that fragmentation is actually slowing us down anymore. That being said, sometimes it happens. And it's one of the other things you can consider when you're looking at your overall system speed. Finally, number six on my list, this one we can't really fix. Sometimes your CPU is just too slow, especially on older machines as you've upgraded and installed newer software that basically has more expectation from the CPU. What you may have may not be up to the task anymore. If that turns out to be your bottom line, if you've looked at everything else related to speed for your system, that might be the tipping point. That might be the case where, okay, either I need to ask less of it, which can sometimes be done by installing a different operating system like Linux or an older version of Windows like XP if you must, or getting a new machine that is more capable and more able to run current versions of all the software that we care about. My tendency is to recommend that if you do so, if you can, New machine, after everything else, is generally the best way to go and gives you the best results for the long term. Now, I do want to point out two things that are not speed issues because they keep getting mentioned in, I'll just say, ads and, and misleading sales items and so forth. One is the registry. Honestly, the registry is not slowing you down. I know, I know there are going to be people that are going to disagree with me and vehemently so. No, I have yet to encounter a scenario in the years I've been doing this, I have yet to encounter a scenario where the registry is somehow solely responsible for the speed of your system being slow. Generally, there may be other things like old software, random things, uh, other things on your system that may be the problem, 
A reinstall is often the way to solve that problem, but registry cleaners will rarely, if ever, improve the speed of your system. The other one, this is an old one, fragmented RAM. For whatever reason, when we started talking about how disk defragmenting is something that can improve the speed of your system, somebody got the great idea that, you know what, we could do this with RAM. Years ago, and I'm talking pre-Windows XP, there may have been a call for something kind of sort of like that. But these so-called memory optimizers, memory defragmenters, whatever you want to call them, no. They do nothing. In fact, they can even slow your system down because they're getting in the way of Windows doing its job of managing your memory more properly for you. So I hope that was helpful. I hope this entire series on performance was helpful. For links to that entire series, for any updates, for comments, for related links to other articles, visit askleo.com slash 126880. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.